What day is it? I don't even know. I haven't really had a clue what day it was for a couple weeks. <laughs> uh, all right, so forgot to mention a while back. So I think it was over a week ago anyway. Um, I posted up a short video to show you what something that 100% weighs over a thousand pounds sounds like when it breaks tree branches. Um, I don't know how many people have uh, reported in, shared their experience of hearing trees being broken and quote like a freight train going through the forest end quote and, be, and then being accompanied with a sighting of one of these hairy people that are very real and living in the forest in North America and around the world, right? And what happened to me one morning, I was going down the road on my quad early in the morning to get somewhere, ran into a cow moose. She just stood there looking at me, so I'm like, oh, she's got a calf for sure. That's one of the most dangerous oh. animals you can go near is a cow moose with a calf. They'll basically stomp your head and kill you dead. So I stopped to let her do her thing. And then I moved up another 20 yards, looked to my left, there's another moose. So I shut the motor off, and here's a young two-point bull. I'll show him to you here, why not? So I'm videotaping him. And then I can hear, I think, three other moose calling down below in the spruce forest. So, obviously I can't help myself, I started calling them in. So one bull comes up, I think, and then another one came up. And there's another one coming from off in the distance, and the one that came up to me spun around to go face off with him. And uh, one thing where I screwed up, see, it's, it's illegal to have a loaded firearm on a motorized vehicle in British Columbia, so I don't have any bullets in my rifle. And the one particular bull, he comes walking up, and he's got a branch hanging off his antler. And I think, I'm just standing wide open in the middle of the cut line, like 100% human being. There's no, there's not even a branch between us, so he comes up, looks at me, his neck is swollen right out, and um, so I let another call to him standing there as a human being and then his tips his ear back and gives me the sideways look and I'm like oh shit and then I realize oh no this guy's if he goes into stampede mode he has my ass he's gonna own my ass right now nothing I can do about it so I just check my gun real quick to make sure I got some safety in there uh oh guns not loaded shit the bullets are in my pocket so as fast as I could I, I dug in my jeans pocket grabbed around stuffed it in there and then he ended up turning around to go face off this other bull that was coming as well zero concern about me but anyway what was significant about that what i thought i'd share with all of you was it was a great opportunity to hopefully try to put a lot of you there when it comes to the hundreds of people who have heard these beings basically smashing trees or tree-sized limbs off of trees How's that tree doing on your antler? <laughs> didn't realize I didn't have a bullet damn gun. And he's about 15 yards from me. Ooh. Look at the neck on him. Ooh. And uh, these guys either came together and clashed in a little bit, or else this, well, this one big bull went down there and just unloaded his his aggression on a tree and he did some major serious serious limb snapping down there and I caught it all on video but as I only had my phone I didn't have my video camera in my pocket which I normally do so I used my phone it kind of bugs me because normally automatically I stick a, a high def video camera in my pocket at all times no matter where I am fishing or hunting but I got it on the cell phone anyway and it picked up the auto pretty good the audio pretty good so that's what that short video was about. I was trying to show everyone what it must be like to hear those massive branches being broken in the forest in front of you. Right? Pretty intimidating, isn't it? 
And coincidentally, for comparison, that is a thousand pound plus animal doing that damage to the trees. So. Here comes another one, it's gonna be a fight. Wah. Wah. So, if it, for the curious anyway, if you imagine hearing these sounds and then seeing something eight, nine, ten feet tall, even more, right? Looking at you, pissed off. You just, just imagine the horror and the terror that your average person goes through when they witness that and they didn't ask for it and they didn't believe any of it previous and then they're slapped in the face with something and would experience like that. Holy shit. And holy shit, is that not fair? That is absolutely not fair, right? It's not fair for anyone venturing into the wilds to not know the truth. Well, you know, then again, I mean, let's face it, the more we learn every single day, the more we all are learning that we have not been the told, we have not been the told, been told the truth about anything, right? Unfortunately. So that's why we're here again. But anyway, so here's, the, I'll, I'll lace up these video clips together so that you can see exactly what happened, the full sequence, and, uh, and have a go at that, and picture, but when it comes to the noise they're making down in the timber, picture you being there alone, and all of a sudden you see a massive hairy hand or arm or leg that's probably four times the size of yours and is snapping trees off. Picture that while that noise is going down. Not too cool, right? And then, picture being that person, and going home and telling everybody honestly because you're in shock and they all laugh at you. And they'll start calling you names and laughing, ridiculing you, talking behind your back, people snicker at you in the small town you're from, maybe in school, your co-workers, they laugh at you. Then you gotta deal with that, right? Absolutely ostracized from your peanut head community. And you didn't ask for any of it. You didn't ask for any of that shit. It's gotta be so freaking frustrating, such a lonely place to be in getting slapped in the face with these experiences and then shit on it. To top it off, where you think you're probably in a safe place, whether it be family, or work, or your community, or even the police. And then next thing you know, you got nowhere to go, right? And you start questioning your own sanity. Did I really see it? Am I going crazy? What's wrong with me? Lots of people start drinking. Lots of people suffer PTSD. PTSD, lots of people suffer depression. And we've even heard of people killing themselves. That's bullshit. Anyway, so while I'm sitting here, I guess that's my, uh, that's my poultry barn I built back there. It's got all the chickens and turkeys in it. They're nearing, the chickens are nearing ready, ready time to be harvested, processed, whatever you want to call it. So, who do we got? <clears throat> Excuse me. A chunk of, here's a chunk of an email. It's titled... I apologize for first one. Steve, I want to just start by saying thank you for being there for all of us. We definitely appreciate you. And sorry about the first time I even I ever wrote to you. I didn't put the punctuation marks where they belong, etc. All good, man. Now onto a little bit of of a hell of a lot more of sorry. Now onto a little bit of a hell of a lot of some things that have happened to me in the last 44 years. This definitely isn't the first one and hasn't been the last. But this time last year, myself, my son Alex, and a friend of mine, Austin, went out to one of the ridges called Beauty Ridge to do some root digging. We got out there to the cemetery where Austin families buried at the park there. We walked over the hill and down into the holler. Well, as you start over the hill, there is a road that cuts through that. We ride four wheelers and dirt bikes, etc. Well, neither Alex or Austin have never dug roots before. So, I was showing them what's what. 
All once, Alex spoke up and said, What happens if we run into the Bigfoot dad? I told him, Son, we don't talk about that out here. We don't even try to think about that while we're out here. Now, I know a lot of people that can't get it out of their heads, but for some reason, I'm just used to it. But, on another note, I never thought what was about to happen, what happened. We run into some cohosh. I show them what it is. I tell them, well, let's walk up and around this way and we'll cut over to the next hauler. Well, Austin spoke up and took us down one of the trails that he thought led back around towards the car. I tried to tell him it didn't, but it was okay. We was root digging anyway, and he was, and we was there to enjoy ourselves. So we come up out of the hauler, we walked probably 100 foot, the damnedest smell ever hit us right in the face. I already knew what it was. Alex did too. But there was no fear, so we went on to her right, out the trail, sorry, so we went on to her right, out the trail, we come to this curb that went back to the right. As soon as we walk around this curb, there were seven different whistles, five to the left, two to the right, trying to mimic birds. The very last one went from a whistle to one of the damnest growls you ever want to hear. I turned to my right, I said, look, we're not here to hurt you or nothing in that nature. We mean no harm, we're leaving. Austin had his little handgun with him, like a little 22. It wasn't bigger than your hand. And I told him, whatever you do, do not pull that gun out. I didn't realize how bad this was messing with him. So I'll tell him, let's go now, this thing's still growling. We take all back the same way we come. When we started walking, Austin was in front, Alex in the middle, and I'm in the back. By the time we get back around this curve, we stop again. I realize Alex somehow got behind me. I look back and asked him, Son, why are you slowing down? How in the hell did you get behind me? I reached out and grabbed him, pull him around in front of me. Well, this, pisses, well, this pissed me off. So I turned, facing my left, side looking into the woods where these things were and I said you're gonna kill me you're gonna kill him talking about talking about Austin but I'll be damned if I let you kill my son I don't know how but I swear I'll kill you too we will all die today but my son will live it went from a deep growl into a real low pitch growl we started walking made it back out to the main four-wheeling road and it finally quit growling at us them boys would not go back up in the woods not even 50 feet. You could see the cemetery and right where the car was parked, they would not get through it. They stayed on that road and had to walk all the way back around. And I stayed with them. This creature never really showed itself. Just a brief glimpse of itself. And there's no doubt in my mind it was the leader of either the tribe or it had little ones, but them other whistles didn't sound so little. I've learned when there's small ones around, especially baby ones, them things can be very vicious. Austin hasn't went back in the woods since. He owns a lot of guns now. Two hours after I dropped him off at his house, and the man didn't really say one word there. He called me and told me he was sorry for not believing me. I told him that he was fine because I understand. That was my son's first encounter out in the woods, but it wasn't his first sighting. He's all about it. And just so you all know, Alex is autistic. Was it coincidental? I don't know. My name is Jamie Douglas. I appreciate you taking out of your life to read my story and share it with the rest of the world. I'm sorry that it was so long, but this is just one encounter so many. Thank you, Steve. Keep doing what you're doing, buddy. You got a lot of people, and thank you. And there's a PS. This is just for you, Steve. Please do not share it this time. All right, give me a second. Okay, man, got you. I read it. Appreciate it. And uh, if you want, all you have to do is send this video to your contacts that you mentioned in, in the rest of your email and let them watch it. All right? Let them watch it. And uh, if they feel compelled to contact me, if they want to share with all the people, they can do it through me if they wish or not. And uh, just let them know that they're not alone. Right, and there is hundreds of thousands of human beings that understand and get it, and have witnessed basically the same shit. And uh, from all those incidents that you have stated, if you want to write in some more, if you got some more in there that might be some some kind of significant puzzle piece for a lot of us here, then send it in, man. Take your time, write it out, do a little 
spell check or punctuation or whatever you do on the program, the email, and uh, and send it in. There's a lot of people that will be very interested in hearing what you got to share, right? So, thanks for your time sending that in. This channel is nothing without people like you, all right? All right, one more. Then I'm going to get going. This is going to be a short one today. <clears throat> Hi, Steve. Well, this is titled Sasquatch Encounter. Hi, Steve. I discovered your channel a couple months ago. As a child, I've always been fascinated with Sasquatch and aliens. I have a great deal of respect and admiration for you and what you're doing, as well as for those who share their experiences. You give folks a non-judgmental and welcoming forum. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for the kind words. And again, it's nothing without you and everybody else, right? It's the People's Channel now. It's taken me some time to write in. Not because I'm afraid, because I'm not very good at putting my thoughts in a print. So here we go. About 15 years ago now, my brother-in-law invited me to go moose hunting. I'd never been, so as you can guess, oh yeah, I'm going moose hunting. I got to see a couple of moose, a cow and a bull, for the first time that week, and was in awe. As we only had calf tags, all I could do is watch. I should also mention that this was in northeastern Ontario, and fairly remote. On the last afternoon, one of the guys offered to take me back out for one last sit to a spot where I had seen a cow. He dropped me off and continued down the logging road. I walked down the lane to a burned out slash pile, set up my seat, and sat down. I should mention that in Ontario you must wear a blaze orange while gun hunting for deer, moose, elk, and bear. I was in an open area and could see five or six hundred yards in most directions. I watched my partner drive over the hill. There was a patch of trees that came right up to the road on both sides. On my side it was about 20 yards wide and about 60 yards long. The other side was a slope going up. I was sitting about 100 yards from that patch of trees. It was pretty uneventful sit until the last hour or so when I could hear sticks breaking coming from that small patch of trees. And then I heard what sounded like a horse blowing or snorting, snorting and sticks breaking. I looked intently to see if anything was moving in there but couldn't see movement. Keep in mind this is my very first time moose hunting. I had absolutely no idea what sounds a moose can make. They look like a horse. Why not sound like one? I was excited, thinking there was a moose coming, but nothing. I didn't feel threatened or intimidated at all. After about 10 minutes of this, it all stopped. Whatever was in there, the only way it could have left without me seeing it would be to walk back over the road and up the slope. A short time later, I could see my partner coming back, so I walked out. While waiting for him to get to me, I went to look for tracks on the fine gravel and sound on the road and nothing. If it was a moose, it would have left a track. I thought maybe it was a bear. When we got back to camp, I tried to describe the sounds I heard to my brother-in-law. He had no explanation. Later, after supper, one of the guys was making fun of me about the horse sound. Not directly to me, though. What prompted me to write in was what prompted me to write in with this story. While watching one of your YouTube videos and email you read, the person described those very horse sounds I heard. I had a holy shit moment, and the memory of that day came flooding back to me. Is it possible that I had a Sasquatch encounter? I suspect as much, but until hearing someone else say they heard the same sound, holy shit. I've moose hunted up there for 15 years, and I've never heard that sound again. There have been some times when I felt uneasy there, but chalk it up to my imagination getting the best of me. From now on, I'll be much more aware. Thanks for taking the time to read this. You can use my name if it helps someone else. My name is Sean Walsh, and I live in southern Ontario. Keep doing what you're doing, and in case nobody has told you today, you're awesome. So are you, man. Thanks for that email. If you've been it's 15 years ago, 15 years of moose hunting, you never heard that sound since. Well, you know, actually, more, more so, what people that are compelled to find a channel like this and then write in, uh, you already know what it was. You're just looking for confirmation, right? I can't imagine hearing something strange in the woods and not knowing what it was, not feeling threat or anything, and then all of a sudden, oh, I think I'm going to go find a Sasquatch channel on, on YouTube and maybe write in what I heard. Said nobody ever, right? It's, I think, I strongly believe that you already know. Your subconscious knows. And that's why it stayed with you. That's why you never forgot it. And that's why you were compelled to email it into a group of people like this. All right? That's what I think anyway, you guys. <laughs> not that what I think means much, but... All right, let's go one more, and then I'm going to go in. So many to be heard, right? I don't know. A lot of people have emailed me complaining they don't have an hour a day. I'm like, well, there's nothing I can do about that. But 
um, I have got to get every voice heard. So what else am I going to do? Right? I got to do it. So I guess I'm going to keep the ball rolling. My dad's encounter, Central Alberta. Hi, Steve. How's it going? So last year in June 21, you read out my three encounters on the edge of a small Central Alberta city. Thanks for that. Now, the other day, while I was over at my parents' place, I noticed that my dad was watching something on TV he normally wouldn't watch. And I was puzzled about that. But then there was a clip in the show that contained an enormous black wolf, which the show was implying was a dire wolf. Who knows about that? But then my dad said, I had something strange happen a couple weeks ago. And I asked him what he meant. And he goes on to tell me the following. He said, It was the early morning twilight just before the sun came up, and I was laying on the couch and heard a noise at the window. I got up, went to the side of the window, and pulled the curtains back and up to see, and there was an enormous Alsatian's head trying to look through the curtains into the house. An Alsatian is another name for German Shepherd. My dad is British, and that's what those dogs are called over there. I said to my dad, the bottom of that picture window is like seven and a half to eight feet off the ground, right? And he said, yeah, but that's what I saw. I asked him how big the dog's head looked, and he indicated with his own shoulder width from the tip of its nose to behind the ears, which seems to me to be pretty darn big. I went outside to look for tracks or pretty much anything, but I only found a couple of indentations in the gravel where it looked like something could have been standing there. But there was nothing really definitive about those indentations except for the size and shape. They were oval-shaped indentations, approximately eight inches by five inches. I don't know if those were actual prints, but I do think that it was likely a dog man that my dad saw. So, draw your own conclusions as to what my dad saw. That, of course, is up to all of you. I will say this, though. My dad seems to have been affected by what he saw. I can tell. That he's not saying everything. One more thing about this dog creature is that it must have been between 8 and 9 feet tall. And what concerns me the most about that is, what is one of these creatures doing in the middle of a small Alberta city? I know there's lots of deer in the nearby countryside because I see them in the meadow across my apartment. I'm not sure what's going on with the world at the moment, but it's getting crazier by the minute, it seems. Anyway, kind of regards, Peter. Well, all right, Peter, make sure you uh, make sure you get your dad to watch his video, right? So he, he might be more at ease with what he saw, and then he may be more willing to give up the rest of the details. All right, and then he's going to know he's not alone. No one thinks you're crazy, and there's th hundreds, thousands of people have seen the same shit without asking for it. And this is a 100% safe place to write it in. And uh, but I have had people email in that there is dogman sightings in Alberta. I think I've had one or two from BC, but it's not much. I and mean, I've never, I've never come across anyone in person in BC who's seen something in that description. So. Yeah, it's alarming as shit. Like I said before, I don't give a shit what anybody says. I see something eight feet tall with a dog or wolf head on it, and it's staring me down. It's getting a hole right between the eyes. I'm not going to waste two seconds. Right? If they don't want nothing to do with me, they will not stand there and stare me down like a predator. They'll put distance between the two of us in tenth of a second like every other wild game animal normally does. Right? Some people might think that's a little extreme, but it's not. It's the laws of the real natural world out there. You have a predator. A predator has its eyes in the front of its face. You got a predator staring you down. It's doing one of two things. It's either wondering if you're a threat or it's thinking about how hard it is going to be to take you down. That's all it's doing. And uh, grizzly bears, you see my videos, grizzly wolves, everything. They'll stare at you a little bit, but they run. They're like, uh-oh, I'm not into this shit. That's a frickin' filthy human being. I'm out of here. So, for all you who do not understand my stance on that, there you go. That's about as plain as an easy explanation as I can give. Something with a canine head, eight feet tall, muscular, man-like body, <coughs> staring me down in the middle of nowhere. Maybe even growling, showing his teeth. Bang, flop. And if it doesn't bang, flop him, well, at least I'm going to put some frickin' shit-eating holes in him before he ends my ass, right? That's just the way it's going to go down. Am I going to tell everybody else to have that stance? Never. You do what you want in this lifetime, but that's what I'm doing. Anyway, you got more you want to email me, anyone?
sharemystoryhowtohunt.com, and I will get to it. And uh, everybody be safe out there.